All right, so now that I have this all set up, um, what I want to do is I want to go back to a Go file. So I think I have this one open. Um, so I'm just going to basically try to do Go, install update tools. I'm going to select everything here, and I'm going to try to get them all to work. So let's just see if this all happens now. Now that my SSH stuff is set up, this should work correctly. And with, with any of these settings that you have, you might have to install some extra tools. So if it pops up things suggesting it, or if you ever install some tools and it suggests it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure my sync file is going to change from time to time. For instance, I don't think I currently have much React tools set up here, but I plan on using React a bit more in an advanced web development course I'm working on. So given that that's the case, I'm probably going to install a couple more extensions, but I haven't used React in quite a while, so I just don't have any of them in my sync file right now. So now that this is all here, we're ready to go. Um, so what I could start doing up here is you can see that I can do, you know, I can start to see all these functions that we have. Um, yeah, I can see them all, do auto completion, all the good stuff. So that's what I got out of that. Uh, I don't know if I actually saved anything here or not. Um, and I can run some of these programs. Uh, Quiet HN is going to run on localhost 3000, if I recall correctly. So if I bring this up, yep, it's bringing up uh, all this different stuff. So we can look at these different articles and, you know, see all this stuff. Um, I don't need to see that. So this is just sort of a limited version of, of Hacker News. That's what the exercise was. I think, let's see, are there any other extensions that we need to look at? So go template syntax, I think I use this for the HTML template package. So this is something that if you end up doing a lot of, you might want to change. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, this is the wrong file. Let me code this. So you'll see here that now that I have a go HTML file, um, this is automatically using the go HTML template and I think that's coming from that extension. But I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, that just basically allows us to do syntax highlighting with some stuff. And you'll see a little bit of syntax highlighting for stuff like this. So we have these. And then on top of that, when you comment, it'll comment using the go style, um, which is just opening brackets and doing this. It's not that amazing as far as extensions go. It doesn't really predict whether or not you're in, you know, it doesn't comment out HTML correctly then. So it's not the, the best thing in the world, but it's not terrible if you're using Go HTML stuff. Um, Go time format is another thing that if you're doing Go development might be useful. So where this one's gonna go into play, let me main.go, um, let me just go ahead and bring this up. And you'll see that I'm using the slate stuff to move windows around quite a bit. That's pretty common for me. Um, in here, where you might do is you could go time, um, generate a time layout, and uh, usually, I thought it popped up more stuff, but maybe not. Oh, maybe I have to highlight it. Okay, it's been a while since I've used this. Okay, so if you do Like this, you can generate a time format. So what this is doing is, uh, whenever you do time.parse and go, you need to give it a layout string. And this is based on a specific value. So so maybe you, uh, let me come down here and grab some of these, you can look. Um, so maybe you know that your, your value is going to be in the format of month, month. So maybe you're gonna have something like 10, 27, 1982, um, if I could type it. So here for the layout string, basically instead of having to go to the Go docs and figure out um, what's the exact date that I need for the, the way this works, because the way parse works, um, oh, I don't have it in here, um, but the way it works is basically it expects a specific date in the, the layout, and that's how it determines what, what format you're using. It's nice, but it's also, um, you know, sometimes can be a little bit challenging to remember those. So this allows you to just do that and just to go generate time layout, and you'll see here that that's not working, or that's now working. And I can actually go to parse. Um, and this is where they'll talk about 
the layout, and all that stuff. Um, so you can go to the GoDocs and look at that. So there's where it talks about the, the layout defines the format by showing how the reference time should be. So this is a specific time, and you basically just show it how the format should be, and that's how it gets it. Um, sorry, I'm trying to go through the rest of these. Uh, the Dracula theme is just my theme. That's one I get asked a lot about. Um, that's how I'm getting that. I, I use Dracula because I kind of like the colors, um, but also I can keep them consistent across all my stuff, which I like being able to do. Um, let's see. Material icon, I think, is just these icons here. Um, there's, like, Prettier, a code editor, which I actually don't have something set up here that I should um, do is the editor.on save setting, or format on save setting. Well, if I could find it. Um, so you can basically set whether or not it should say it format a file and save. Uh, I recommend it, uh, for especially depending on what, you know, what language you're working with or what files you're working with. It's nice to usually have that, but I'm going to go ahead and set it up here so it's there. Um, you can set this per language too, so if you do to like editor dot uh, format on save, um, you can have it here. You can notice that there's also a format on paste. Um, I've disabled it on certain things, but sometimes you might want it. So it's kind of up to you as to whether or not you like it or not. Um, I don't use that one that much. Setting sync is the one that you saw me using before. And that actually reminds me, sync, update, upload settings. So I think that should have updated them. All right. So that should have done that. This key mapping. Um, so that should import some settings. Hopefully that didn't mess anything up. Um, that's just kind of making uh, making this, well, sorry, that one's just kind of making the key binding similar to uh, what you would expect with Sublime Text, and Tailwind CSS, if you happen to use it at all, um, I'm not using it in my beginner or my, my web dev course, but I plan on using it more in my advanced web dev course, and this just sort of gives you some IntelliSense with it, so it makes it a little bit easier to use some of the stuff, which is really nice. Um, to do highlighting, if you care about that sort of stuff, it can be nice so you can do things like uh, do this, and you'll see how this is highlighted yellow, it makes it easier. Um, fix me, you can have some pink. Um, it, it, it doesn't do, if I recall correctly, it doesn't do this format very well, which I don't love. Um, just because in a lot of projects I've been on, you put a username or something here when you're doing a to-do. Uh, it, it's a little bit annoying that that doesn't work, but that's okay. Uh, for personal projects, it still can be useful. I think that's most of the extensions. I think that covers most of what's here. Basically, it's just pick the ones you like and go with them. If you ever have questions about which specific one I'm using, you know, feel free to ask. That's fine. Um, I don't have any problem with that, but I just didn't want to go through manually installing all this stuff because that just would have taken way too long and it really wouldn't have been a good use of anybody's time. But I think that's most things. We've got Slate set up. We've got uh, the ZSHRC. We have um, all of these other extensions and stuff like that. The only thing I'm really missing at this point is some of these warp drive paths. And, you know, I'm just going to add those maybe in the next video or at some point. But, well, sorry, I probably won't add these in a video because it's not useful. You saw how warp drive worked in one of the earlier videos. But I don't think you need to see how I set all mine up because that's not useful for you. Especially things like this where I have specific volumes mounted that you aren't going to care about. 